Thanks for staying with us. Now, 60-year-old Pacheli School for the Blind is seeking the intervention of the government and well-meaning Nigerians to be able to continue with its free education program for the visually impaired uh, to enable the students to develop their skills, improve their educational status, and gain independence, especially in reading and writing, in a view to assisting them to get a sound education. Plus TV Africa visited the school in Sululiri area of Lagos to interact with the world of the visually challenged yet intelligent children. Life for the visually impaired is better imagined than experienced, as it takes a lot to live in this class of disability conveniently. Most touching is hearing that some of them were not born this way. I know that that day I wanted to do my exam at nine years old. So I was not feeling headache from that place, child. I cannot see again. When I was two years old, the mon one morning I woke up, so I dressed up to go to school. I was in KG1. So that morning, I don't know, I just went to lie down my bed after I'm done with dressing up. I was having kata and cough. Then my mother went to health center to ask for drug, that's to buy drug for my kata and cough. And they gave me septrine. So the first day I first took the septrine, I was having um, itch rashes on my body. Like, not actually itch rashes, just some rashes. So the next day, my mother went there again and they gave her another antibiotic. The next day, that same day, I now started having blisters on my body then. That's how I started. And the thing went all over my body and all my skin was burnt. Pacelli School for the Blind and Partially Sighted, an initiative of the then Catholic Archbishop of Lagos, Leo Halley, was officially opened on the 16th of June 1962 and named after the then serving Pope Pius VII Eugenio Pacelli. Learning without their sight is obviously a challenge. The challenges used to face is just say like like there's some kind of things you can't do on the computer. Like programming. It's hard for a visually impaired to learn programming on computer. For the thing to enter my head sometimes, I may not understand. I have to ask the teacher to recap again. But at the end, sir, I used to get it, but it's not easy. Teaching visually impaired is not like teaching the normal child. The normal child, as you are teaching, they can see what you are talking about. But for the visually impaired, they just, they cannot, some have not, never ever seen anything before. So you just have to, as much as possible, bring home what you are talking about to the child. Moments in the classroom and labs are unique as they express themselves. Okay. We captured this scenario of a deaf and dumb father in a conversation with his visually impaired daughter. It's a touching moment as we speak with him. Okay, he said he wants scholarship for me just to finish my school. I want to go to Queen's College. Jane Nunyeneri is the principal of the school. She has a simple message to the government and well-meaning individuals. The government was in charge of this school before eventually the Catholic Church took over their school. And uh, we pleaded with them to give us annual subvention. They refused. And some government uh, governors, when they come, they can assist us as they can, like uh, Amber, they gave us a, a coaster bus. And a big money was budgeted for the physically challenged people in Lagos State. But that was our own share. So the only time they give us, in, if there is a celebration, we write that we need something they give us. They are yet to step up 
to assist these children that are in Pacheli school that do not pay any form of tuition. So we are appealing to government. These are their own children that the Catholic Church has decided to assist. They need to also help us because every month we, we pay 1.5 million for our staff. If they come to assist us, we'll be very, very grateful. By June 16, 2022, Pacelli School for the Blind will be 60. The principal is happy that products of the school are widely integrating successfully into public and private institutions. Destiny Mama for Plus TV Africa. Moving on, Nigerians are expecting a change in 2023. And members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, at all levels have a role to play to actualize uh, this dream. Those were the words of River State Governor Nelson Wike when he visited Governor Doye Diri at the government house, Yonugua. But governors also called for unity between the two states. Governor Nelson Wike's visit was informed by his desire to ensure that there is unity in the PDP before the presidential primaries ahead of the 2023 general elections. He stressed the need for synergy and peaceful coexistence among the people of Rivers, Baeza and neighboring states, advising the citizens to desist from instigating crises among governors. Wiki also praised Governor Doye Diri for his contribution to the success of the last PDP convention, saying that same is needed to silence so the opposition. The way he participated in the conduct of the National Convention, just last concluded National Convention, my brother and my sisters, it is not uh, easy. Three new governors, three, himself, Oyo and uh, Adamawa, we didn't give them that chance. We thought that they are uh, new people. Why do you allow new people to go? But they have uh, embarrassed us <laughs> by conducting the best ever convention. Responding, Governor Diri thanked Wiki for the visit, which he said was apt. He maintained that, despite litigation over the Suku oil feed, there is need for the two states to unite while advancing their cause in the political space. We can do all of that. For instance, we are in court over Suku, and all the brotherliness you have extended to me, that one, both of us have disagreed. And you two, you are holding very strong. I'm also holding very strong, but I hope that uh, God will grant us the grace to also overcome that before you leave office. With the presidential election still ahead, these two believe the PDP stands better chances of winning. Jesse AC for Plus TV Africa. Lagos State Police Command has assured that the state is safer and more secured for people to do businesses and live in. The Commissioner of Police, Lagos State Command, Hakim Odumusu, in an exclusive interview with our correspondent, Lovi Kukoyadokun, was advocating for the introduction of community policing into school curriculum. What are your thoughts on that? Take a look. Incessant attacks on innocent citizens and businesses has been the order of the day in some parts of the nation almost on a daily basis. But that's certainly not the case with Lagos. However, AIG Hakim Odumosu confesses is not a tea party to provide security in the center of excellence as he ran up his tenure as a commissioner of police, Lagos Command. What you need in this job as a leader is leadership by example and effective supervision. Once you're able to do that, you can go to places in Lagos, in security. So those are part of the things that I use in making Lagos to be secure. I got involved personally at the expense of my family, enjoyment, at the expense of my social life. The NSARS crisis is certainly one experience Odimozo would never forget in a hurry. The marks are still indelible and visible everywhere in Lagos. The trauma was much. But part of what we have signed for is sacrifices, if happens, and experience even our life. We have that one behind our mind, that 
we are to serve the country. We are to be 100% loyal to the constitution of the country. And because of serving the country now, because of the hazards of the job now we have, we should be prepared, and we are prepared to pay supreme price for the country. And that's what happened. So having this one behind, so we are not totally, totally 100% devastated because we know along the line it's going to happen. He encourages officers and men of the Nigeria police to play their role in the most respectable and reasonable way. To let them have the fear of God in the policing. Well, yeah, if you have got the policing, you'll be able to carry out other members of the public. So everybody go to the police station as a problem. Directly to him or her, or indirectly to a relative, somebody closer to. Once you have that mind, once you have that door behind, and they are coming to you because they believe that I can solve their problem, then you don't compound it by not being a human, by not being professional. Odumosu, who moves to a bigger assignment as an assistant inspector general of police, has a few more days in Lagos as a commissioner police. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Uyedoku, reporting for Plus TV, Africa. And now we're wrapping up on these issues of suit in River State. But how could residents have described the state government's fight against illegal oil bunkering and suit in the state as a welcome development? The residents wake up every morning to breathe air polluted by soot emitted from illegal refineries in the state. In a broadcast, the governor had declared 19 illegal oil bunkering kidpins wanted and tax council chairmen and traditional rulers to guard their domains against the activity. The soot emission in Port Harcourt and its environs continues to be a major concern for residents who attribute the cost to illegal oil bunkering and gas flaring by multinational companies in the Niger Delta. I do not think the River State government is doing enough to tackle the issue of soot. If enough was being done, the governor would have released the report of the committee he set up on suit, which we've not seen the report here today. So if we see that report, which is a process of investigation, we'll get to know the sources of this suit. If the state government said the local government should clamp down on bunkering activities, it is going to be a holistic matter. We are responsible men of the society who will be engaged to engage this bunkering. It can be a dialogue team. But if you say you can get a youth boys that are not properly fed to go and start fighting bunkering, of course, these bunkers will take care of these boys and then this menace will continue. It will be recalled that in the past few months, Petron has been fighting this battle. We have been going from places to places, smoking out the operators of artisanal refinery, otherwise known as no fire in River State. We are happy that the River State government has come all out through the directives of the governor to the local government chairman to fight this fight. They suggest that the best way to curb illegal oil bunkering is by creating jobs for the team in youths. We here at Youth and Environmental Advocacy Centre, we are working at modalities of creating and establishing solar farms in communities starting this 2022 so that youths who are involved in these processes can get other alternative opportunities within and around those solar power systems to be able to end their living. Diplomatic solution can also be on stream. If you arrest or clamp down on the artisanal refinery operators, you bring them to book and give them a, a, an op, a alternative of setting up a modular refinery. I'm sure that between now and the next few months, this area would have been turned around to become an employment hub for the nation. Is it wrong for a state government to build a refinery? Every Nigeria state is big. They can build refineries for them. Produce. If, if you say, if, if, it, if it is the modular refineries, you do it and do it well. Let the boys come. Engage them. The police has a big bone in the throats of illegal oil bunkers in recent times. A move commended by the people. And that's all on this edition of Plus Report. But before we go, let's to remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and now, of course, on Twitter. And also do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obiuku. Thanks for watching.